Love has the power to crush our fears and make us push our boundaries. It often compels us to do things people sometimes call crazy. There are plenty of examples in history of people who lost their lives doing what they loved most. John Backer, a legend of the climbing world, was no exception. On July 5th of 2009, John would take his last breath on his last climb before his inevitable accident. What happened on July 5th of 2009 at Dyke Wall near Mammoth Lakes, California that led to the death of the legend of the climbing world? Stay tuned to find out. Backer was born in 1957 and raised in Los Angeles, California, one of the most mountainous states in the U.S. Growing up with the sight of mighty mountains must have ignited a spark in Backer to climb them and see what it feels like to be hundreds of meters above the ground. Mountains and climbing had fascinated Backer so much that he started climbing at the tender age of 14 years at the bouldering spot of Stony Point, located in the northern San Fernando Valley. After graduating high school, Backer attended the University of California, Los Angeles, where he was a math major. In 1975, at the age of 18, Backer and his two friends established Astroman, a route in Yosemite considered one of the toughest climbs then. He loved meeting and climbing with other fellow climbers who shared the same passion as him. Backer met John Long, who opened a new door of the climbing world for him, the solo climbing. Solo climbing, or soloing, is one of the most dangerous yet exhilarating forms of climbing where the climber climbs alone without any belayer controlling the rope for safety. The idea of reaching extreme heights all alone and with limited safety measures might equate to insanity or suicide. But in the climbing world, passionate climbers view it as an adrenaline rushing experience and are ready to risk their life for it. Fueled by his passion for mastering his climbing skills, Backer decided to drop out of university. Backer's father was also a math professor at the same university. However, Backer didn't fear anyone and was determined to pursue his dream of becoming the best climber in the world. He headed for Camp 4 in Yosemite Valley, the safe haven for legends like Backer. In Yosemite Camp, Backer set up a climbing gym named Gunsmoke. He wanted impeccable fitness and a mindset to follow his passions. Besides exercising to increase flexibility and strengthen his muscles, Backer was hungry to devour knowledge that revolved around climbing. He was fond of consuming information that could help him polish his skill further and help him achieve his dream of emerging as the world's finest and most successful climber. He read Zen in the Art of Archery, a book by Eugene Harrigal, a German philosophy professor. He also studied the work of Chinese philosophers to get in the right mindset for pushing boundaries and doing what the brain often perceived as impossible. In 1976, Backer free soloed a 5.11a route, New Dimensions, in Yosemite. The story of his successful climb spread like wildfire, and he received great recognition from some of the eminent climbers. In an article in Colorado's Daily Camera newspaper, Backer shared, People looked at me like I was very weird for a couple of months. They thought I was crazy or something. In 1981, Backer's climbing career marked a significant turn as he embarked on a route near Tuolumne Meadows. He was the first climber who dared to ascend the difficult route with his colleague Dave Urian. Backer climbed with a rope, however, his protection measures were next to nothing. The stake at this climbing route was so high that one small mistake would have cost Backer his precious life. The route was then named Backer Urian after the successful adventure of Backer and his colleague. In the same year, Backer published a note and promised a grand prize. The note stated, $10,000 reward for anyone who could follow me for one full day. But there was no other John Backer with an appetite to take huge risks that might cost them their life. No one showed up, even after offering an amazing cash prize. In 1986, Backer and Peter Croft ascended the legendary El Capitan and Half Dome Cliffs. The amazing part of this climb was the time both climbers took. In just 14 hours, Backer and Croft conquered an astounding 5,000 feet of wild rock without proper safety to protect them from mishaps. Backer soon earned a name for himself in the climbing community, and new climbers admired his passion and his thirst for taking as many hard routes as he could in his lifetime. Free soloing had become addictive for Backer. 
The more he set out on difficult paths, the more his soul yearned for additional thrill in testing his boundaries. Backer traveled to Pueblo, Colorado to meet the master of bouldering, John Gill. Backer wanted to master bouldering, a type of climb where a climber completes moves of extreme difficulty on short stretches of rock called problems. With strong determination, Backer successfully repeated the toughest problems Gill had completed in his fantastic career. Backer had become the undisputed king of the climbing universe. Many renowned climbers had learned about his unroped climbs on the toughest routes that entailed hundreds of feet. Backer had successfully tackled some of the most challenging routes, which included Butterballs and Nabisco Wall. Climbing on these routes was considered impossible, even with full protection, yet Backer demonstrated to the world that nothing is impossible if a wildfire of passion is burning inside your soul. Backer trusted his skills more than any safety, Thus, he was never hesitant to take the most difficult route. Instead, he took it as a challenge to ascend the routes that were called impossible to conquer. Lynn Hill, widely considered one of the most accomplished female climbers in the sport's history, paid tribute to John Backer on her website. She shared a heartwarming element that played a significant role in Backer's extraordinary success. What inspired John to grow the most in his life was the birth of his son, Tyrus. It was endearing to see the tender side of John and how much he loved his son. Beyond the father-son relationship, they seemed like best friends in life. In the early 1990s, Backer shifted his focus from solo climbs to different sports, including golf and snowboarding. However, his passion for climbing reignited again, with more might than ever. In 2003, Backer joined hands with Steve Carafa, the president of Acopa International LLC. Backer's fame as a famous climber flourished in the sales of Acopa International. In a short time, the company gained an overwhelming response from its customers for its high-performing rock shoes. Unfortunately, the partnership only lasted for three years. In 2006, Steve Carafa and John Backer confronted a dangerous accident that changed the course of their lives. John Backer had spent most of his life outdoors, climbing mountains and challenging dangers in his way. However, Backer never experienced any lethal incident or fell while climbing solo, even with little protection. However, the celebrity of the climbing universe met with an unfortunate road accident that could have robbed him of his life. According to some sources, this accident occurred because Backer fell asleep at the wheel, which resulted in the car drifting and rolling. The accident occurred about 33 miles north of Ely, Nevada, on Sunday around 7.30 p.m. Backer his girlfriend Anastasia Frangos and Steve Carafa were returning home from the outdoor retailer show in Salt Lake City. Carafa died on the spot, and Anastasia sustained some minor injuries. Backer was seriously injured and was airlifted to William B. Reary Hospital. He had five broken vertebrae and some severe injuries on his hands. Backer didn't have medical insurance to cover his rapidly escalating medical bills. However, his fans and climbing forums raised money for his treatment. Moreover, he received tons of emails and cards wishing him a speedy recovery. Backer was deeply moved when he learned about the fundraising for his treatment. Backer survived the accident and his wounds were healed. Once again, he was able to resume his solo climbing. By that time, Backer had lost many of his climber friends. They were killed due to the dangers of solo climbing. Backer was fully aware of the risks involved in solo climbing. However, he never flinched or hesitated to go on any rock climbing spree. Three years after the road accident, on the 5th of July, 2009, Sunday, Backer once again faced a deadly accident. And this time, he wouldn't survive. Backer went climbing the Dyke Walls, Mammoth Lakes, California. The Dyke Wall is a rock formation in the Mammoth Lakes, Eastern Sierras. Mammoth Mountain is a semi-active volcano one of the famous destinations for sporters all year. In winter, it is a perfect choice for Californian skiers. During the summer months, it's a perfect spot for hiking, biking, and rock climbing. However, little did the climber know that this would be the last time he would climb, and he won't be able to do it again. Backer fell from a height of 400 feet on the ground without any protection. He faced an immediate death and was transferred to the hospital after some climbers spotted him unconscious on the ground. To this day, the exact reason for Backer's death remains unknown. Only Backer knew what went wrong in his climb that led to this catastrophic incident. 
but unfortunately, Backer took this secret with him. John Backer once said, I accept the consequences of all that I do. No matter what we do with our lives, our bodies are temporary. We are all going to die, and I'd rather die climbing than doing anything else. Backer's son Tyrus was devastated by his father's death. On one of the climbing websites, he posted a short note expressing how he felt uneasy about his father going solo climbing that day. I knew it was a bad idea to go soloing today. I knew it. On the website supertopo.com, a fellow climber and friend of Backer, Paola A., shared the account of Backer's death and the autopsy report's finding. She also explained how Backer was found after the accident. The first party on scene stated that they heard what might have been the sound of a rock falling, then a muffled groan. Then they saw a puff of smoke. Paola has also shared the key findings of the autopsy report. According to the report, Backer died because of a massive cerebral hemorrhage. There were no signs of internal organ damage or cardiac injury. The autopsy report also mentioned that Backer had broken his fist and ankles when he fell from the height. John Backer's death was quite a shock to the climbing community. No one could believe that the maestro of climbing had fallen and was no longer between them. The editor-in-chief of Rock and Ice magazine, Dwayne Riley, shared in an interview with S News about how people were in total disbelief about Backer's death. He was so calculating, so solid and good. He was safer climbing without a rope than many people with a rope. Backer was not only an excellent climber, but also a kind and humble human being that won the hearts of plenty of climbers worldwide. His death left his family, friends, and even his fans heartbroken. Many people posted their memories with John and how he impacted their lives. I'm just stunned. John always seemed to have such mastery in his climbing that I could never imagine him going out this way. A car accident, maybe, but not soloing, not John. His impact on climbing was so massive I can't imagine anyone else filling his shoes. From his introduction of bringing sticky rubber shoes to the States, to his stance on ethics, his goofy style sometimes, his commitment to soloing, etc. His legacy is huge and we have lost someone we'll never see or find again. It's so sad. Reminds me that you have to take those moments with people when you can because they may never come around again. Ice Climber, Boulder. We have lost one of the purest examples of climbing and the arc of human potential somehow. I feel far more mortal tonight. Apogee Climber. My stomach sank the second I heard the news. I just climbed with John on the 27th, a true inspiration to all. I will always remember the great effect you have had on my life. You will be missed. Condolences to the family and everyone he touched with his life. Ian A. Climber, Durango, Colorado. In one of the videos from the 1980s, Backer confidently said, I know I'm not going to fall. I'm going to climb for the rest of my life. Backer was a man of his word. He climbed never fearing the threats that colossal mountains posed. His fearless spirit and courage became a beacon of inspiration for climbers worldwide to push their boundaries in pursuit of their passions for climbing. John Long, an eminent climber and friend of John Backer, stated, There has never been anyone like John Backer, and there never will be again.